I love the bumblebee. It's one of my favorite insects in the world. <laughs> I study this insect. Because by according to the laws of aerodynamics, this bumblebee should not fly. The size of the wing is one over nine. The size of the body, one over nine. Now, this bumblebee can fly 12 kilometers in looking for food. That is, we are talking of from Ikeja to Lagos Island to look for food. Now, it has a particular dance. It does up and down. If it does, it, if it does that dance, it will get to Nikpa. But if it goes straight, it will get it. Now, so I ask myself, if according to the laws of aerodynamics, it can carry nine times its weight. So I did my little mathematics. And if it can carry nine times its weight, and then it can fly that, that means the ratio of the wing to the whole body in flight is one to 90. That means the wing can carry 90 times its weight. So I ask myself, how come the bumblebee can carry 90 times its weight and me, Ubon King, cannot carry 90 times my weight? So I asked the bumblebee and the bumblebee gave me an answer. He told me, it is because they have not called a meeting of National Association of Bumblebee to tell us that according to the laws of aerodynamics, we cannot fly. The day they called that meeting and they convinced the bumblebee that the law say you cannot fly, then it will stop flying. But because it does not understand, it is still flying. Maybe the problem we have as Christians, the problem we have as human beings is that people have told us that they have limited us by what we hear. So whatever you hear affects you. Who told you you cannot be rich? Who told you you cannot be successful? Who told you that you cannot make it? If anybody ever told you they have injected, because I remember growing up, they told me that I shouldn't talk to strangers. They told me to Agbalu or they told me to, um, show me they told you to. Good. Uh -huh. So because of that, we don't talk to strangers. But guess what? Your money is not in the hands of your family. It's in the hand of a stranger. Your house is not in your hand. The key to your house is not in your It's in the hand of a stranger. If you cannot talk to a stranger, then there's a problem. If you are married to somebody, that person you are married to was once a stranger. Your teacher that taught you was once a stranger. So how come they did not turn you to Agbalubo at that time? <laughs> Between the ages of 0 to 6 is the year of innocence. Any child, they don't know what's happening. Between 6 to 13 is foundation years. When you begin to learn your language, you begin to learn to speak and begin to learn things in life. Now, but when you get to 14 to 20, 14 to 20 is when you start having vision, start dreaming. I want to be a doctor, I want to be an engineer, I want to be a society man, I want to do whatever. This is when it's most critical time, especially for parents. Because if they tell you, if you ask yourself now, you wanted to be an architect, but your parents shut you down. So because they shut you down like this, now you become a lawyer. When you finish, you now go and wax album because you actually wanted to be a musician instead of doing this. Now, by the time you miss it at 14 to 20, it affects everything in you. Because at the age of 20, you are supposed to take decisions for yourself. In Numbers chapter 1, verse 2, it says, according to the tribe, every male child, now according to 20 and above, able to go to war. Once you are 20 years old, you are able to go to war. Now, if you are 20 years old and you go to war, you carry a sword, you carry a shield, you don't go with your father to fight you. Now, so once you are 20 years old and you are still in your father's house, it's a shame because you should be able to go to war. Now, in Africa, they will say no, that until the child mature. By Bible standard, once you are 20, you should go to war. So the same way they will treat a 49-year-old person is the same way they will treat you as a 20-year-old person. Now, in verse 18, verse 20, verse 22, 24 of Numbers chapter 1, you will see that written in there. So once you get to 20, that is decision year. Between 21 to 30 is when you are supposed to make mistakes. You are supposed to try, you are supposed to make mistakes in any field of your interest. Because by the age of 30, mastery should come upon you. You should be an expert in a field. If you are 30 years old and you have not decided or found your own place, you have lost 18 years of your life at the age of 30. So make mistake between 21 to 30 because at 30, Jesus became, started his ministry at 30. John the, um, um, 
David became a prime minister at 30, and um, uh, Joseph ministry I became a prime minister at 30 while David became king at 30. So at 30, you should be an expert at your field. Between 30 to 40, you are coasting because once you get to 40, 40 is the end of a generation. And I've said it to me and I've said it to many people, I will not invest in anybody over 40 years old because an investment in, over, in anybody over 40 years old is an investment in the past. One generation is 40 years. So once somebody is 40 years old, I ain't coming near you because that's the end of a generation. Because once you get to 40, end of probation, 40 means the end of probation. 40 to 50, you should be ready to get to the peak because at 50 is the peak. You need to understand this now because at the age of 50 is the peak of your mastery in everything. People have said that miracles still happen after. It happens. But if you are 50 years old and you are running with somebody who is 15 years old, what do you think will happen? The boy will win you. And that's why I said that if you do not pay the price of dignity then, you'll be somebody's entertainment too. How do I have a 50-year-old man guarding my house? What does he want to do? By 50, he should be managing companies, not 50 to come and guard my house. He, 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 he abuses youth. Am I communicating?